one of the big reasons that we got into this is that the soda industry has gone in such the wrong direction, in my opinion. So we went ahead and said we're going to do the exact opposite of that. And so the original sodas were the opposite of that. Now, unfortunately, in America, we went to a um, centralized production facility model. And so that has really ruined what I consider sodas were back in the 17 and 1800s. Before we created techniques to fake it, we had to actually make it. This is a very special piece of gear for us. This is where we do a lot of our culture growing. Half the operation about water kefir brewing is actually the growing and cultivating and continuing of our culture. There are tens of pounds of kefir culture inside of this container. And inside of here, what you see is wonderful bags of secondary food. Now, we feed them a wonderful diet of apricots and figs and other fruits in their dry state. And those are fed to them on a continuous basis. You just put fruits in there. That's part of it. That's just, you know, what you can see. <laughs> so I'm going to get some of the culture out so you can actually see. You can see some of them floating on the surface. Water kefir culture being grown. They're all at a small size right now. They're in the rookery. They're in the process of growing to the right size and the right consistency to make it into the beverages, to ferment them into their perfection. What is that exactly? Water kefir is a natural product that grows in every mountain spring above 7,000 feet, or at least it used to. And different cultures, and back in the day, everyone brought their animals up to the spring to drink, to eat. They would have an interaction with the spring, throw their food, let their animals drink and lactate all over it. And then they come back the next moon cycle and voila, water kefir was growing. So someone figured out that this could make something. Well, the, the shepherds that did this, of course, had their animals. And on the way back, they would collect up the milk from their sheep and their goats and they would put the crystals in there because there was a long tr tradition of doing so. And that became the milk kefir, the tradition of milk kefir. And that tradition has two branches. The people who came off the mountain with kefir, some of them put it in their milk. Some of them used it to digest their herbs and their berries and their, other, and their honey and other things. And there became the origin of most of the fermented beverages that we drink today. Now we believe, and this is my opinion, that kefir was the origin of a lot of those. We found it in the old Abbey Ale recipes. We found it in the ancient alchemist texts. We found it all over in the Egyptian texts and Mayan texts. And I've been to all these places and they still drink things like this. Almost all indigenous societies have these sort of beverages at their core because they are about survival and about making the most of the nutrients that are in their environment. And so water kefir has become one of the top fermenting processes and techniques because it has been used for centuries effectively. It's got the longest running safety record of anything I can think of. First there was wild fermentation and then there was focused fermentation. So what people could collect from nature became the original thing that they used to ferment. So that's back around again today and because we're all suffering from over sugaring and as research has come up to show just how important the relationship is between the probiotics and human health and wellness. These guys have become more and more important. See these little crystals in here? These little crystals are actually the conversion of sucrose to crystalline dextrose. So this is a, it's called a SCOBY, a symbiotic culture of microorganisms. The SCOBY here, a couple of different microorganisms take the sugar and they turn it into a crystalline dextrose, a crystalline castle. It's like a giant fractal crystal castle that all of the microorganisms live inside of and creates really wonderful compounds from nature. This is our hibiscus. And whatever the color of the beverage is, it flavors and colors the kefir crystals. They take it on. They're permanently fermenting the sugars and minerals and, and special elements that are in this liquid and creating the enzymes and the um, nutrition and the probiotics that are infused in here. Every enlivened beverage that we produce goes through three fermentations. We also make a wonderful coffee product. Now people are like, what? Well, what we found is the some of the original methods of producing coffee in places where it grows traditionally, maybe five, 6,000 years ago, was to ferment the coffee. Cooking the coffee came a little later, and the ancient tradition of coffee fermentation is what we're really into here. And so what we set about to is, is to take everything that we consider wrong with coffee or unhealthy about coffee and transform that. 
coffee too acidic, or you burn the, the caffeine so it makes you jitter. Also, that the coffee produces an acidity in the body. All of those things that are wrong with coffee are addressed when you ferment it, and you ferment it non-alcoholically and antioxidantly. So you get pure caffeine compounds, you get pure minerals and nutrients and all the things that are in coffee that make it special, but it takes away the acid producing and all those things that we don't like coffee for. This is the last part of the extraction. The herbs uh, were put with the water yesterday and it's been like 24 hours, so now we're gonna extract the herbs. And then our first step of fermentation starts where we add sugar, salt, and the kefir. <laughs> It was a hobby for two years, growing my own water kefir. My six-year-old and my wife always had to drink my water kefir, and they didn't like it, you know what I mean? I, but for two years, I was learning how to do it. And then we found out that we, uh, Tom and I both had the, the same idea about water kefir, and then uh, I wanted to work for him. You can see the uh, herbs. This is the final stage of the, of the extraction process. This is cinnamon, vanilla, and Rose. Don't say Jamie. So the whole point of our enlivened beverages is to ferment 98% of the sugars out and convert them to dextrose and other monosugars, polysaccharides, which are actually the opposite of sugar in your body. Raw sugar creates this effect that we're all suffering from. Polysaccharides and monosugars create the opposite effect. Well, it's time to go back in the other direction. This is the water keeper. So since it's keeper, it's bacteria, it does have a little smell, and we try to get that out in between each feeding. So it smells really just right. Yeah. It's time for the fermentation to start. The last is the kefir. I try to make sure it really gets mixed up and gets a lot of that Tulsi rolls all through it. Then we seal it all up because kefir at this time does not like a lot of air. Six hours it needs to ferment. And all of these are fermenting right now. We've got 20 gallons here. So you're constantly at, in some process on one of them. And yeah. And so you can basically brew anything. At this point, there isn't a beverage that we can't brew. Otops goes into our root beer. And it's one of the support herbs that allows the root beer to have that creamy flavor. Their oat tops is milky oats, it creates this milkiness. And it's in all the ancient formulas to create that, like the mouthfeel. Um, marshmallow root, of course, another one that does the same thing. It adds that mouthfeel and, and fullness to the beverage. And we have our coffees that are infused with the medicinal mushrooms. Then we have our special chocolate that's infused with the mushroom extracts also. And so we brew that up into our special OMG chocolate. I fermented anything with this. I fermented plants, bugs, yeah. grapes. We're making fabulous Pinot Noir, raw bubbly, like a raw champagne sort of a thing. We took the best beverages that people have this ancient memory of and brought them forward and did them in this way, so they're probiotic now. Ready to try that? Let's have a tasting. Mm -hmm. Lemon ginger ale. Uh, a beverage that used to be made into an alcoholic ginger beer. But this is the original ginger beer formulas, but done all raw and non-alcoholic. So this is like a soda, more like a soda than a... It's really good. The origins of most of our original sodas right. were the kefir-based sodas. Because back in the day, they didn't have chemicals. They couldn't fake it. Triple root beer. This is one of my favorite beverages. I grew up tasting real root beers in Florida and Tennessee. We used to brew our own. And I wanted to bring that experience to people. 
So we took the three root beer traditions. That's the sarsaparilla root beer tradition, the sassafras root beer tradition, and the birch root beer tradition. And we fuse them together into the only probiotic root beer on the planet that we know of. The root beer that is in stores, of course, it's all chemically done, but... Yeah, that's, well, that's the whole thing. This is the real herbs, the real extraction, and the real fermentation. There's a lot of natural root beers on the market. And there's some, some root beers that have even been actually fermented with microorganisms. But they're all killed and then carbonated afterwards. That's a soda. We're not a soda. We're an enlivened beverage, a beverage that's still alive from the moment you drink it. The moment we make it to the moment you drink it, it's alive. Next on our list for sampling is going to be the jasmine green tea. Ooh, okay. The uh, jasmine is fresh right now, so I'm gonna get a fresh sample of it. So there's not many products that are still considered live culture. We're evolving our understanding of food safety with these live culture products. And so, Jasmine Pearl is probably our most popular beverage right now because live culture products have their own built-in antibacterial capacity. Mm -hmm. So smell. Very first smell. This is our water kefir culture. Each one of these little individualized crystals has as many probiotics as people on earth. Today we're having a really bad problem with what we consider bad bacteria. And that's really not a problem of bacteria, that's a problem of our consciousness. Our one-size-fits-all nuke it kill it, all bacteria are bad kind of mentality. And so slowly, maybe quickly now, they're, they're realizing that most bacteria are really, really good for you. And they're vital. And they're killed by the things that kill the other ones. So when we're killing bacteria in this old model, we're killing everything. And so this new live culture movement is how to bring that back again. So you keep this alive for years. That's yeah, the idea, they right? can be alive forever. <laughs> so this is what you would normally find in a, in a spring or... This. You might see little guys like this growing off blades of grass or off of food. You might see them growing off of the roots of trees that are sticking out into the water. You see these little, those little crystalline gooey masses growing off of them. Well, next time maybe you want to, maybe you want to take a little sample and bring it home. <laughs> <laughs> these, you can't grow these in a laboratory. You can't produce these. Only nature can produce them, and only people can grow them and hand them to each other. That's it. The newfangledness of it is, is really just that we've lost our culture in America. This is only newfangled to people who don't have access or, or, or a lineage that they're bringing forward of live culture uh, fermenting of food. This is a beverage that you'll get when you go to Central America. For the last couple of thousands of years, we all had to survive on the food that was available locally. And to do that, you had to ferment and preserve and keep your food. This is a classic Mexican chocolate that's infused with the six medicinal mushrooms. You have what we consider the closest beverage to what the Mayans and the Aztecs were drinking back in the day. And so all of these live that's culture the techniques are ways to preserve and enhance the bioavailability of the nutrients in those Give foods. Good and so that's what this movement is about, is about bringing the live culture back so that the foods can be more healthy, more wellness providing like they're okay, supposed to be. Go. Cheers. Oh yeah, this is really mm. nice.